Hi, I'm Niklas Alin, this is the Neckbock Dev Blog and I have been traveling again. Uh, this weekend I went down to Gothenburg to attend a wedding and then back again. And uh, this means that I don't really have anything new to talk about. So apparently it's time to do a let's play of some obscure old Game Boy game again. So this is Moomin's Tail for the Game Boy Color. And this actually has something to do with the Elephant game. This is a Japanese game, in fact it's made by Sunsoft, which is incidentally the same studio that also made Trip World. But my point is that the Moomin Trolls were originally created by Finnish Swedish artist and writer Tove Jansson, who is one of my greatest influences in terms of both visual art and storytelling as well. But yeah, let's just uh, start playing and I guess uh, I can talk more about Tove Jansson as we go along and the Moomin Trolls. I'm gonna start on level 4 uh, because to be honest the first few levels are not particularly good. This it's not a super good game, <laughs> but I, I kind of like level 4, the, the ghost ship, the phantom ship. Um, there's a bit of a eerie darkness to Tuve Johnson's work, even though it's, it's for children, it's, it has this sort of melancholy about it. One morning a ghost ship is seen anchoring near this shore, not far away from the Moomin Valley. Okay. Madness falls upon the Moomin Valley and the frightened people start to leave. That's good. Hey. And here we go. But Moomin, full of curiosity as always, decides to sneak aboard the Phantom Ship secretly at night. And I want to say that uh, to the left we have the Moomin troll himself. To the right we have the best character ever, the Snooze Moomrick. Snufkin, I think they call him in English. And I literally have a necklace with this character. I'm wearing it right now. I, I have an harmonica in my pocket that I can't even play particularly well because of this character. Uh, not a big part of this game, uh, but pretty significant in the uh, original books. That's at least, significant, at least significant for me. Let's walk outside from the Moomin house. And here we have the map. And... We're abo aboard the ghost ship. I can't enter this door yet. But I can go to this way and go inside the ship. And I mean, here you go, it's a bit creepy. It's not scary necessarily, but it is a bit creepy. And that's, this is... Oh, look! The sprite actually grows when I walk near to the camera. That's a pretty cool effect. And you have this sort of Hitchcock-style camera angle. Can I jump? Yes. Here's a cannon, and I have this cute little animation when I crawl through the cannon. I like this, actually it doesn't do much, but it's adorable. This door is locked. Oh, sorry, I entered the wrong room. I'm gonna go down here. A voice sounds out from nowhere. The faint voice says, find the charmed hand glass. So if you want to meet the captain, it looks like you need to find the charmed hand glass. Very good. Oh, there you go, did you see that? What? The ghost spawns behind me. Okay, that's pretty effectful actually. Well, I mean, now I've figured out the tricks and I can just walk back and forth, but okay. I'ma buy that. Let's go down here. Whoop. The broomsticks are attacking me, but I don't think I can, I'm, I can't jump high enough. Ow! Oh, look at this animation! That is the best animation, it looks so disappointed! Ow! I'm not good enough for the moving troll. Okay. This door is locked. Eat the fruit. Yes, regain some health. But what I can do? I can go here, and I can go to this globe, and it starts spinning, and there are some stars, and now I'm transformed into a plant, which obviously makes a lot of sense. Oh no, I did it again. That might be a problem actually, because this time 
Oh, the stores go away, <laughs> and I'm transformed into a mini troll. And now I triggered it once more. Apparently, I'm not doing anything to trigger it. It's just when I walk nearby, it happens. And now I'm a pink blob on the floor. So that's that's nice. I want to be the flower again. I need to be the flower. And I'm myself again. Okay, does this work? Or will it become something else now? So there's this really creepy story. <laughs> okay, what we need to know here is that the, there are a few books originally written in Swedish by Tove Jansson herself. And she also later drew uh, comics. She was an, an illustrator, so she drew a lot. And then that was picked up in Japan. Oh, by the way, if I'm a flower, I can jump really high. And now I got deflowered. <clears throat> That's apparently a, a word. I mean, okay, I'm just gonna get thrown out of the ship because of my bad performance. Let me try that again. Oh, that animation is also heartbreaking. Okay, back at the map again. Let's go back to the ship. So what I was saying, it was picked up in Japan and they made this anime series. Uh, and this game is based off of the anime, so the art style is uh, more anime-like than the original Swedish drawings, which mm, I noticed that, I mean, in the flower, for instance, like that, I don't think this flower is particularly uh, in line with the original stories. Like, transforming into something, there is a really uh, touching story with a magical hat when they transform into a sort of anti moomin troll which is really thin and has really big ears and that scared me when I was a little kid but being transformed into this weird flower thing feels uh, random to me. But anyway, it's pretty cool. I want to say too, they, it's funny because they, uh, they dubbed the anime into Swedish and sent it on uh, Swedish television, which is cool because, uh, as I said, Tove Jansson was from Finland, uh, but spoke Swedish and studied in uh, Sweden and stuff. And there's a specific accent, a Finnish-Swedish hybrid accent that is very distinctive and closely associated with the Moomin Trolls, for obvious reasons, and they made sure to get Finnish-Swedish actor, voice actors for the Swedish dub of the anime, and Growing up in Sweden, I had absolutely no idea that this was animated in Japan. Whereas watching it now, when I'm older, it's very clear that it was animated in Japan. <laughs> oh, it's so difficult to control. But I have picked up a key, do you see that? And now I have the second key. I can go in here. Uh, there are some bouncy ghosts. Maybe I can jump high enough if I bounce on the napkins. Or maybe I can't, maybe I have to be a flower again. I don't know if I can be a flower again. I think that once a broomstick had touched me once, it won't let me turn back into a flower. <laughs> Frustratingly. But maybe I don't need to. I, I have played this a little bit yesterday, uh, but it's mightily confusing. I also want to say that this isn't really representative of what the game is like. Oh, here's the mirror room. Uh, that's also a bit creepy. This isn't representative of what the game is. It's really a side-scrolling uh, platformer, almost like a mini-game where you have to collect these question marks and uh, to clear the level, and it's not particularly engaging. I chose this level because of the um, more adventure time or more adventure-like uh, gameplay, which suits me better. Now I'm mini. I don't want to be mini. I want to be the pink blob, which obviously makes a ton of sense that you can be a, a pink... I, I think it's meant to be a shadow. I think I'm actually not a pink blob or a pancake or whatever. I think I'm actually invisible and this is my shadow that is pink for some reason. And the reason I think this is because if I go into the mirror room while invisible, I actually... that allows me to pick up a key. Uh, what other rooms are there? This is the second cannon room. I'm not gonna go into this cannon, because I know that if I do that, it will shoot me off the ship and that's game over. So, you know, one cannon, uh, completely safe the, and funny little animation, the other cannon, instant game over. That's... and they look identical, so that's nice game design. I'm gonna die, nope, eat some fruit, and grab the key. 
I'm looking for the hand glass, as I said, which is kind of like a little mirror. Enchanted. Ah, uh, I'm not playing very well, but I mean, it's me. What do you expect? This is cool. Uh, the cannonballs are pretty annoying, but the portrait in the background. Eee, ow. What? That was game over again. I'm really not performing well. Okay, back here. Back to the ship. I think though that it saves my progress. So if uh, the doors that I have locked are still unlocked. Yes, they are. Sweet. Can I do that now? I can go and... I don't remember if I did that. Anyways, I'm trying to focus here. Yes, uh, Tove Jansson is a major influence for me uh, in her storytelling and in her art style. The humans, if you look at the humans in the elephant game, their sort of anatomy and their clothing style and uh, faces and everything is hugely inspired by the drawings of Tove Jansson. And I was also talking about her storytelling, like the Moomin, I don't know, like, I obviously encourage you to go and read the books. There are like six books, children books, very good, <laughs> very well written books. Uh, I don't know what they're like when you read them in translation, so maybe they're not as good in English. But Moomin is very disappointed in me. Yes, give me the key. I was gonna say the eyes move in the portrait in the background. I'm looking for the glass, and here we have jumpy things. I can bounce on them, I think, and get that thing, which was a key. And now, game over. Okay, back again. I got to, to keep the key, that's nice. Let's just mash through this while I try to talk about art and storytelling. Okay, so they have... The cool thing about these books is that they handle very, very subtle emotions you know they're not about love and passion and hate and stuff they're about much more uh, subtle and easy to miss emotions they like they take up several different flavors of uh, loneliness for instance and sort of subtle relationships with friends and family members and things that you are afraid of as a child uh, as I said it's a bit creepy but it's not actually scary it's just unnerving. Where is the damn glass though? Is it up here? I can, maybe I can go there as a plant. Yeah, that's a good plan. Let's do that. Good plant. Sorry for the puns. There are this uh, type of creature called a himul. Himul. And they are very big and loud. Okay, they're frightening. They're not dangerous. They're not scary, but they are frightening. And they're frightening in the way that if you're a small child, and you are dragged along to this sort of family party. Like, for instance, a wedi wedding. I was in a wedding this weekend. And there are gonna be all these uncles and aunts and grandparents, and they are going to be very familiar with you, but you're just a small child, so you're not gonna be particularly familiar with them. And they're gonna laugh, and they're gonna pinch your cheeks, and they're gonna make jokes that you don't understand, and they're gonna be very, very tall and loud, and that's that's an emotion, like that's the sense that you have, and I have, I remember that from being a kid, and that's sort of the, what base, what went into the creation of these Himul creatures, and so they're not dangerous, they're not monsters, but if you're small, you are afraid of them <laughs> in a very special way, and that's, and I mean, I know, that subtlety and that sort of keen awareness of, uh, Special emotion, and there is one book. Damn it, this is really not going well. Don't remember which one it was, but I have some other favorite book. As I said, the, the uh, Snufkin character, the Snus Mumrik, who I wear as a necklace. Uh, I'm a blob again. I think my plan is to become a plant and uh, try it with that, with the room, with all the things. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I could probably try and push myself all the way to the boss. There's a boss in this ghost ship, but I'm not going to be able to defeat that boss, so, you know, I'm just talking about something that I really like for a little while. Oh, there I go, plant. I was talking about Snooze Mumrik. He is uh, kind of a mysterious character. He's the best friend of Moomin, 
and he, like half the year or for several months a year, he just walks off into the wilderness alone and he lives alone by himself and he lives alone and he sort of writes songs and philosophizes by himself and then he comes back to the Mimim Valley and that's always like a, a time for celebration and then he goes away again and it's like, it's, the loneliness is not a problem, it's okay to be alone and I'm really bad at this. Can I do something else? There isn't even anything to fetch here. And I'm got thrown off again. Oh well. Trying to talk while playing a, a, a difficult game. Anyway, the loneliness is not a bad thing. It's okay to be alone, right? That's the thing I feel about like Wally -E as well. Many books, they sort of, our stories sort of chastise loneliness and think we are strong together and you need to have your friends and everything. But to be honest, on is an oddball and she's like you are strong by yourself and it's okay to sort of be introverted and to sort of go away from everybody and sort of collect your thoughts by yourself and then you can come and visit and you can have these close close friendships in the Moomin Valley and then half the year you go away and I don't know that's that's uh, and loneliness is a theme in the games I make the elephant game has a strong loneliness factor in that you are the only elephant and the world is sort of against you but also my previous game and you know I'm gonna keep making games about loneliness for several years into the future. Have I said anything uh, intelligent yet? No I don't think so but I think I'm gonna give up by now I can't find the, the hourglass it spawns I might spawn in different locations every time or depends on which order it takes the keys and I might have completely screwed up. So I'm just gonna crawl into this cannon and show you what happens if I do that. And there we go. Flying away from the ghost ship by cannon. And that's an instant game over. So thank you very much. I'm gonna close this off and uh, I will see you next week when I will have something uh, proper to talk about. That is all for today's episode, but stay tuned for next week when I will be back. If you want to subscribe to this devbug series, you can do so on Patreon or directly on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter for quick updates. Thank you, and I will see you next time.